Okay, I want to do some center of mass demonstrations. All right, now remember the center of mass. Newton had a bit of a problem because he could he didn't know if he could take the mass of an extended object like the Earth and concentrate it down to a single point of space. Ultimately, he proved that you could. All right, so you can take all of the the mass of an extended body and consider it to be at a single location in space. And we call that space the center of mass, or sometimes called the center of gravity. And I want to do some demonstrations about that. <clears throat> all right. Now, first of all, where is the center of mass of a meter stick, for example? Well, you can find it by just doing this. And where your fingers will end up is the center of mass. Okay. And the center of mass, notice that I can balance the meter stick with one finger, okay? And you can do that as long as you have the finger under um, the center of mass, okay? So if you can balance, balance an object with one support point, the support point being my finger, then that support point must be um, below the center of mass, okay? Or as it turns out, above the center of mass. So in the center of mass of the meter stick is very close to its center, its, its geographic center, okay? And if it were homogeneous, it would be uh, at the exact center, all right? Okay, what about the center of mass of, say, this hammer? Is it here? Well, no, because I can't balance it there, right? So if you were to balance the, this hammer on one finger, where would you put it? Well, you put it kind of like around here someplace, all right? Like around here. So the center of mass of the hammer is located near the, near the head, right? And that makes sense because the head's made out of metal, it's more dense, heavier, and so forth. So the center of mass of a hammer is there, okay? Now, um, so the center of mass of an irregular object, all right, will be located, um, you know, uh, near one end, okay? And the support point can either be below or above. Instead of supporting it from below, I'm going to hang that hammer from a single support point, okay? All right? And when that settles down, when it comes to equilibrium eventually, it'll settle right here, okay? And then the center of mass will be immediately below the support point, okay? And, and uh, yeah, and that gives us a way to measure the center of mass of an irregular object, all right? So I'm going to find the center of mass of a different irregular object, the state of California, okay? I have a map of California taped onto some cardboard here, and let's find the center of mass by just hanging it, okay? Once it settles down to equilibrium, I know the center of mass will be immediately below the support point, all right? And I can find that support point. Oops, excuse me. I forgot to get uh, some tape here. Um, I can find that support point by taking the weighted string and putting it, hanging it from the support point as well, like this. And I know the center of mass is somewhere along that string, okay? And uh, you know, let me zoom in a little bit. You guys can see this. Zoom in a little bit. All right. And I'm going to tape this string down. And there. Okay. And I know the center of mass is somewhere along the string. Well, where exactly? How can I find it exactly? Well, I just take it and I hang it from someplace else. Say here. And I know the center of mass is somewhere along below that support point. So I'm gonna take another weighted string. And it's right here. There. Down there, 
And the center of mass is located at the intersection of those two, those two strings, okay? And that's somewhere around, somewhere around Fresno, okay? And no matter where I hang the map from, the center of mass will always be immediately below the support point. Okay, and so if I wanted to balance the state of California on one finger, I would put that finger right at that location. Okay, which is roughly right there, All right? Roughly right there. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I got this other cool little toy here. Got a little bird. Okay. I can balance the bird on my finger by placing the finger right at the beak. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a kind of a fun little, fun little toy. All right. And it actually has a, its own little stand right here. I can flip the, flip the bird on the stand and it'll balance just like that. So the center of mass of the bird, okay, is immediately below the beak. Okay, and they arrange that by putting some weights in the inside the wings there. All right, so that's a nice little kind of a fun little toy, but you can make yourself one of these, right? Here's what you need. Zoom in, and zoom in the slow. What you're going to need is two forks, a quarter, and a cup. Okay, and uh, you might want to put something in the cup to weight it down. Here's what you do. So go get that stuff and then come back. Pause the video and then come back. All right, so now take the fork, take the forks and put them together like this. Put them together like this, okay? And then take the quarter, Take the quarter and put it in the topmost tines, like, like that. Then you should be, don't put it very, don't put it through too far, just a little. And then you should be able to balance the quarter on your finger like that. Okay. And then if you're good, with a little practice, you should be able to balance the quarter on the edge of a glass, like that. Okay, this is a little bit. Let me, let me take this further, a little bit further away. Should be able to balance it on the glass, like that. Okay, see if you can do that for fun. <clears throat> and what this shows is the center of mass of the fork quarter system is immediately below the rim of the glass because, because that is the single support point. So the center of mass is immediately below. Okay. All right. Some, more, some other fun stuff you can do with this. Take a pop can. Okay. Take a pop can. Put just a little bit of water in there. Okay, now, um, no, actually, I'm going to save that one. Hold on. I kind of got, got a little out of order. Now, let's talk about your center of mass. Where is your center of mass? You, you are an irregular figure. You know, you're not homogeneous like a rectangular piece of plastic, right? But where is your center of mass? Well, it turns out it's kind of right, right behind your belly button a little bit. Okay. Now, your support points are your feet, okay? Now, for stability, you need to arrange it so that your center of mass is always above your support points, okay? Take this, uh, take this two by four. And I have the center of mass of this two by four is pretty close to this push pin, okay? Pretty close to this push pin in the geometric center. Okay, now I have a 
I have a weighted string hanging off of there. All right. And notice, hold on a second. Notice that the, the base of the two by four is the support and the center of mass is between the support points. And as I begin to tilt this, the center of mass is still between the support points. As long as that is true, when I release it, it will go back to this. Well, what happens when the center of mass goes outside the support point? What happens when it gets outside of that? Once it does, it topples over. Okay, so as soon as the center of mass gets to a place that's not between the support points, but outside the support points, then it topples over. Okay, so in order for us to remain, to remain stable, our center of mass must remain between our support points. And our support points go from our heels to our toes. Okay, if you put your feet together, you know, so that heels match up with heels, toes match up with toes, those are your support points, okay? You can enlarge that base by say stepping forward, okay? Now you have a longer stability range um, front to back, not necessarily side to side, but front to back. So you can, so you can arrange it, uh, you can make yourself more stable by say spreading out your feet, okay? The answer is you're aware of that, all right? Um, now, some fun things you can do with this. Um, let's say, uh, let's see, what do I want to do? I have to, I have to uh, zoom out a little bit. So excuse me for a minute. Actually, I have to change my, I have to change my location of the row over to my corner here. Okay. There's a reason for that. I'll tell you. I also have to get my monitor computer so that I can see what you're seeing. All right. Now, let's say that, uh, okay. Let's say that I wanted to just pick up this mass, okay? Now, when I do this, gosh, it's hard for me to get the proper perspective. Zoom way out. Okay. So, Let's say I wanted to pick, I put the, the mass about, oh, I don't know, half a meter, half a meter or so, not quite in front of, uh, in front of my body, okay? If I, want to, if I want to pick up this mass, I can very e easily pick it up. But when I do that, I have to make sure that my center of mass, which is right behind my belly button, about midway through your body behind your belly button, I have to make sure that that point stays between my heels and toes, okay? Now I accomplish that by moving my backside backwards. As, my, as the front of my body goes forward, something else has to go back in, so that the center of mass remains between my heels and toes. And as you can see, my backside does just that. Well, what if I arranged it so that I couldn't, okay? Here's how to do that. And I invite you to try this on your, on your own, okay? Find a door, right? Find a door, okay? And put your heels right against the door, okay? So that your back, so that your back and backside and all that are against the door, okay? Okay, now. I'm going to try to pick up the mass with my backside against the door, so I can so I can't move, so I can't go backwards, right? When I do that, if, when I take my uh, top of my body forward, it's going to get to a place outside of my toes, and I won't be able to pick up the mass. Okay, I want you to try this. Okay, first of all, try you know without your just you're out in the open there, but then try it with your um, Butt against the against the door, and you as you lean forward to pick it up, oh, you will topple because your center of mass 
will get in front of your toes. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Here's another fun one to do. With that same door, put your toes against the door like this. Then go heel to toe, heel to toe twice, then put your feet together. Okay? So go heel to toe, heel to toe, and then bring them together. And then with your feet like that, well, with your feet like that, reset, heel to toe, heel to toe together. Okay? Lean down, put your head against the wall, put your head against the door so that your back is horizontal. And then try to stand up. Okay? And then try to stand up. Uh, what I found, girls can do this. Mo most girls can do this. Most boys can't. Okay? I want you to pause this and go try that right now. Okay, what's going on there? Why can, why can most girls, in my experience, most girls can do this, most boys can't? Well, why can't I? Well, because when I do this, my center of mass is in front of my toes, you know, and there's no way I can stand, I'm, there's no, I'm stable. If somebody just opened the door really fast, down I would go, right? But so I can't stand up, but girls can do it. And I think one of the reasons why, Actually, I think two reasons. One, girls are, are, are a little bit shorter and girls have smaller feet. So they're so they don't, their front, they're, there's not as much of their upper body that's, that's uh, um, in front of their toes. Most of their weight is still behind it. And so the, their center of mass is still behind their toes, okay? Boys generally are taller and their feet are, large, are, are longer. So they're farther away from the door, okay? And one other thing, girls, some girls can even you put a chair there, do the same thing, do the same thing, then put a chair there. If you can do it without your, without your, uh, if you can do it, you know, then try it, pick up a chair and then stand up. And if you, if you can do that, then, uh, then you're special because not many people can do that. So there's just some fun um, um, center mass tables. Another one, stand, stand straight up, but shimmy up so that your, your feet are together, but your shoulders against the door. Then pick up one foot. Pick up the foot that's away from the, pick up the foot that's towards the door, no problem. Pick up the foot that's away from the door and you topple because now your side to side equilibrium is messed up. Okay, the, the support point is outside. Um, or your center of mass is outside your support point. Okay, so those, those are just some fun center of mass demos. Uh, okay, I got one more. The pop key. If you take a pop key and you look at it, okay, at the bottom of it, it doesn't have a flat edge, but it has this kind of like edge like that, right? Now, the center of mass of an empty can goes right up at center, or a full can even. And if you try to do that, if you try to balance it on that little, that little marker there, you can't do it. But you will be able to do it if you put a little water in it. I think that's going to be about right. And then you can balance it just like that. Okay. Balance it just like that. Now, if you don't have enough water, then the center of mass is too far. Actually, if you have, if you have um, not enough water, the center of mass is too high. And that means it's outside that support point. If you have too much water, then the center of mass is too low and it's outside of that support point. If I put too much water in it, it, uh, it won't be stable. If you put too much, it won't be stable. Okay, if we put just the right amount, then the center of mass of the water can system is right between those support points, okay? All right, so those are some fun center of mass demos to, to try at home, all right? Go have some fun. If you, you know, go try to do this stuff, it's fun.